ask you today. Are you having fun? Answer, answer. I want a louder answer. Are you having fun today? Yeah! Yes! We've learned so much about Korean culture. Now, what I want to do today is not focus on the cultural, not on the structure itself, but I want to focus on the audience as people. I want to get to know you, the audience, because I believe that culture only reverberates through you. I believe Parka, the beautiful young lady. I want to get to know you over there, the young man with the plaid shirt sitting next to that beautiful young lady with glasses. I want to get to know each and every one of you and make this cultural, make this cultural, make this cultural heritage, this national treasure of South Korea, Tongmyo, as personal to you as it is to me. Now, I'm sure, I'm, before I go on to introduce Tongmyo, which I doubt, which I, I think a lot of you actually know what it is, before I get to introduce it, I want to tell you, I want to answer a question that you're probably all asking. Why do I have to listen to this girl talk about Tongmyo? Who is she? Now, it says right here, I'm Park ji from Korea University. That doesn't tell you anything. I told you I wanted to be more personal with you. That doesn't tell you anything either. So why do you have to listen to me talk about Jongyo? Well, I'm going to answer that question because this cultural heritage, this national treasure is very personal to me. But apparently not many of us. So, what, so even though we don't participate in ancestral rituals every day of our lives, we still know that they exist. For example, we know that there are ancient pyramids in ancient Egypt. We know that there are ancient sacrificial rituals in China. Wait. We know that there are ancient sacrificial rituals in China where they actually had funeral, funeral traditions in order to um, respect, their, respect the dead. So what does South Korea, one of the oldest, one of the most revered East Asian cultures in the global society today have to offer the traditions of ancestral rites. Well, first of all, South Korea does have a 600-year-old tradition called Teza. Now this Teza is what I was talking about earlier, where we set a table in front of our ancestor, perhaps a tombstone, perhaps just a picture of him, and we have food we can't eat and alcohol we can't drink, and we pay our respects to that dead ancestor. Now some of us, some of the foreigners here might think that's crazy. I mean like, food exists to be eaten, alcohol exists to be drank. Why place it in front of someone who's dead? Well, it's because it's an important part of our culture. Teza is a part of Korean Confucian culture. And, the, and Teza states, and Confucius states, in the future. But I'm not here to talk to you about Teza, the broad category of Teza today. No, I'm here to talk to you about royalty. The paragon of royal ancestral rights and the structure of Jongmyo itself is beautiful. There are, there are blood red pillars reaching up into the sky in an endless hallway of 19 rooms. Now, how about we imagine it in our heads since... Okay, oh, it's right there. Okay, so... Does anybody know why this endless hallway is so long? Anybody could venture a guess? Uh, no. Well, Jongmyo Yongmyongjeon was commissioned by King Taejong in the year 1394. And he wanted to honor his ancestors. And so he had every room, 19 rooms, placed along this structure. And each of these rooms honor a different king, his queen, and an ancestral tablet that inscribed each of the king's deeds on it. So basically, and every time another king died, another room was added. So in short, Jongmyo, Jongmyo Yongmyongjeon itself was like a growing ancestral family tree. A growing family tree, and it shows you how all these ancestors, how they're all connected, and how we grow and make history as we live on, and how it's not something that's stagnant. We've got to have some pizzazz, you know? We've got to have some celebration. So every year on May, in front of Jongmyo, there is a celebration called Jongmyo Jeryeo. Now, now this celebration is a performance of ancient court music, which has roots in, ancient, in the ancient Chinese dynasty and the ancient Korea dynasty. There is also an accompanying dance, and if you go and see this performance, Korean dance, and you feel connected to Korean culture as a whole. That's what I said earlier. I said I would give you an answer. I told you I would be personal with you, 
and I would tell you why I was qualified to talk to you about Chongbei Yongyeonjang when frankly at like 19 years old, at like a chubby girl at 19 years old, I'm not nowhere near like a professional of this amazing cultural heritage. So why am I talking to you about this? And why are you listening to it? Well, a few months ago, I had some trouble at my house. Frankly, I'm a teenager. As we all grow up, we have trouble with our parents. Like, I want to move out of the house. I don't want to, like, stay attached to my parents forever. No, Jiang, no, you're a girl. You have to stay inside the house. Basically, that sort of thing. So I was sad, and I went to Chongyo, and I was all alone. And I looked down an endless hallway, an endless hallway of red pillars just shooting up into the sky. And I looked at each of the rooms just right next to me, and I felt connected to Korean culture, to my ancestors, and to the world as a whole. When you go to it, 